Okay, so what we've been doing the last, last few times is, um, so I guess our, con our, our context is some fields and relations. Um, and from that, we can construct these scheme module type spaces. Um, and, and in this sort of canonical way that we talked a little bit about, hopefully we'll have time to talk more about, um, we can construct everything you would expect from a TQFT and dimensions for, for an n plus one dimensional TQFT dimensions n down through zero without doing any sort of combinatorial arguments. But to get the n plus one dimensional part, like this, usually called a path integral, um, we need a little bit of extra structure on our input data. Um, and also I should mention this input data is essentially just an n category, the right sort of duality. So what we expect from a path integral is that it satisfy a gluing wall like this, which might look a little bit complicated, but that's sort of the only reasonable thing you can write down. Um, and I'm, this is a, in some ways kind of a clunky form, but it's the form that's continuing for computation. And then the inner product, you know, this formula makes a reference to some inner products on the scheme modules. And the inner product on the scheme modules gives given by the path integral for the in manifold cross i. Um, and then the theorem is that, I'm, I'm abbreviating it because I've written it down in the last few for lectures, is that if we have a, sort of a candidate path integral in the n plus one ball, the simplest n plus one manifold, and the scheme modules are finite dimensional, and then the inner products on n balls given by this are positive definite, that implies there exists a unique path integrals satisfying one and two here such that and then this one ball is given by our candidate example. And, and what we've been doing the last few lectures is seeing how this theorem, and I, I guess implicit in the proof of this theorem, is it not only tells you this thing exists, it tells you exactly how to compute it in terms of putting any, any way of cutting your manifold up into balls, like a handle decomposition or something like that. And, and so implicit in that is a state sum formula for the invariant. And we're seeing how specializations of this theorem led, we got the Torreira-Vero state sum, we have the digraph written finite group states, um, we have the sort of Euler characteristic theories you see in um, one plus one dimensions. And so today we want to do the case that corresponds to sort of a crane gutter type TQFT, and then we'll see in a sort of slightly indirect way, it also gives rise to Russian TQFT derived theories. <coughs> um, I think for those of you who are already familiar with Russian TQFT derived theories, you might be suspicious of what we've done so far because it's sort of inherent in, um, in what we're doing that these things, you know, we get actions of, say, the mapping class group, so in manifolds on the nodes, there's no, like, projective action and things like that. And, and on the other hand, to define Russian and contrived type theories, you have to equip your manifolds with some extra structure. Like the three manifold needs a framing, two manifold needs um, P1 structure or Lagrangian subspace. So, um, and so part of what will come out is that you see why, for, you know, the, the Russian Deacon Thrive theories are kind of anomalous, not just in the technical sense, you know, it's kind of a pun, um, not just in the technical sense that there's this anomaly and TQFC things, but they're, they're unlike all the other things we talk about. Okay, so I guess first I should, um, yeah, actually, so any questions thus far? Um, so I want to talk about, um, modular categories are, um, created, uh, fusion categories would be another name, and then there's a Specialization of these satisfied additional condition that are modular. Categories. And of these, you know, this is the one you'll find most often in the literature. You can say Tarayev's book on TQFTs. Or, um, and so this, which I'm about to define in some way, this is sort of the input for the Rashid and Tarayev constructions. 
but it amounts to and the, de the definition of this is based sort of tailored so that you can do what Russian taken and drive did back in 89 or you know, whatever it was. So um, so I'm I am not a big fan of all this you know, proliferation of category you know, there's all these different terms from different kinds of categories and I think it really obscures you know the things they have in common in the underlying structure. And I'm, I'm such a not a big fan of it, I can't even remember what all the definitions mean. And I always want to say what they are. So what these things we should think of as just generic, semi-simple three categories that have only a single zero morphism and a single one morphism. So what we expect in that case, um, and, and that they have duality. So, um, that level zero, one, two, three. So, is that like, I want to say that's like a planar algebra with a strand with a oriented strand. It's like oriented. Um, if, in terms of if you're, so if you're familiar with planar algebras, it's it's a it's a planar algebra. The, the main difference is we draw our pictures in three dimensions rather than two. Yes, yeah, three categories. And then, so the, so it's not planar, it's like, you know, three, you know, three spatial. But if we still only have strands, we don't allow like sheets of membranes. That's the condition that, and degree, and degree mm -hmm. one, yeah, so degree, saying we only have a single thing, degree and zero means the regions have only a single color. That's the difference between, say, a tensor category and a two category. And saying we have nothing in degree one means that we don't worry about sheets, so we have only strands running around in our pictures. But in dimension two, we have no restriction, so it would be a plain error with you know, arbitrary strand types. Mm -hmm. um, I think I, but I do want to impose that I have you know, finitely many simple objects. So that's like okay. finite depth. Mm -hmm. And that's about it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, um, so in dimension two, well, so, so we, we, you end up you know, drawing pictures. So the edges are labeled by two morphisms. As we in a string diagram, the, you know, the K cells are labeled by N minus K morphisms. Um, and as the two or three morphisms together form a one category. So that's that's the category for the definition. And um, we can juxtapose them together so that you know, the labels of this box would be you know, morphisms from the Composition of these two guys into the composition of these two guys. You know, we're allowed to sort of turn to maybe to make sense of pictures like this. So, so the the axioms, which again I'm not going to write down in quite detail, I'm just so how to think of them. Um, this is what, what you would need to make sense of pictures like this, so that we can rotate them you know, any way we want. Um, so, so you can do that, that would be something like pivotal, right? Because you can yes, rotate. Yes, exactly. Yeah. But you shouldn't be allowed to unkink things, and you shouldn't be allowed to. What about this rotation by this three? Like if I have this, I guess we're rotating things yeah, three and three six. That, that should be the idea in this case. So it was, it was interesting to consider cases where that maybe is a minus sign, and you can sort of spin and enhance and so mm -hmm. something. Yeah, I'm interested in. But let's so that yeah, and so certainly we. You want us you know, this is not equal to this, right? but it is equal to if this is labeled by a um, some factor T space. Yeah. So okay, so let me let me try to be a little bit more. Oh, but, but I just want to say that there, um, yeah, this isn't a, a foolish definition because there's lots of interesting examples of things like this, and the main one being you can take the representations of a quantized. You know, take, take a you know, say a simple E algebra, we consider it's universal developing algebra, take some Q deformation of it, consider the representation category of that. Um, that will satisfy everything I've written down except that we will have typically you know, infinitely many simple objects. And then if we specialize, you know, Q to be some root of unity, um, 
and then we can take, then it becomes non semi simple, but we can take a, some kind of quotient and get a finite semi simple. So, this is, these are the standard examples. It's, it's possible to construct other exa examples. Um, so, what are the sort of manipulations? Because I, I eventually, if, if this lecture goes according to plan, I'm going to be making some kind of detailed calculations on this, so I need to be a little more precise. Um, and also, I'm sure in Blackboard space, I'm going to erase some of this. Um, so, so our two morphisms, sometimes also called simple objects, uh, L. Um, and, and so, what kind of structure do we have? One of the important things is if we have a, you know, so, so for any, anytime we have a, a bunch of things in L coming together, associated it is, is to it is some vector space, it depends on the things. Category we've been considering is linear of the, the top um, Sometimes this is abbreviated just by you know, having some of that. Um, so if we have two strands like that, this picture should be equal to solvents and coefficients. For time reasons, I can't give a complete definition, and these things are treated in literature, but I don't want to make the rest of the lecture confusing if you haven't seen this before, so I'm having trouble deciding how much to talk about. But certainly, you know, that, this is one thing you will use. Um, more generally, if you have a picture like this, simple objects, so if we ever have a picture like this, um, this is equal to zero plus sort of trivial object. Um, this also means we see a crossing that is equal to the sum of some of the coefficients of like this. So these the rules I've written down imply that any given any picture of the three ball, we can evaluate it to some multiple of the empty diagram. Um, because we can take first get rid of all the crossings and we end up with some sort of planar network. And then using this we can manipulate the planar network into a pull a bubble off like this and then it's going to be zero or not. I guess it will be something we'll further evaluate and use the scale. Um, Okay, let me not say more about that because I'm not doing a very good job at having 
recall a few more facts. Um, so let's assume we have such a thing. Um, and let's also assume that, you know, so it's implicit that this is an inner, an inner product because given any you know, pair of pictures, we can, we can re you reflect one, you do, I guess there's a sort of a star structure that we can reflect things, leave them together and then evaluate in the three ball and that gives us that evaluation map, which is really a map from the scan module of the two sphere into the complex numbers. Is a candidate for this, and we can check whether it's positive definite, which it often is in these examples coming from Lee algebras. And so we know by this general theorem that we've got some kind of three plus one additional t of t. So let's try to explore the properties of this and see whether it's something new or is it something other people have known before. Um, in particular, let's write down a formula for the path. Um, so, we did a little bit of this yesterday, but if we want to compute the path integral of four manifold, let's assume that it's closed. That's a path integral of, uh, assume our four manifold has a handle decomposition. sub i is the union of the zero through i handles. Um, so we're presented with this four manifold. You can think of it as the sort of the neighborhood of the three skeleton union of some four handles. And then we apply the boom formula and we find that that is equal to z and w3. Um, Now we, that's you know, this term here. We're going to have to sum over a basis of the scan module of the thing we're gluing along. What are we gluing along? We're gluing along a um, three sphere. What's the scan module of the three sphere? Well, these the rules for this category allow us to take any picture of the three sphere. I think I said two sphere earlier. I made a mistake. All these pictures are three dimensional. Um, it's, it's one dimensional. So and it's spanned by the empty diagram. So we can drop the summation here, and our EI just becomes the empty picture. So we take the, this thing, evaluate it on the empty picture, times the product over all four handles of um, Z of um, four handle, which is just a total all evaluated on the empty picture. One over the inner product of the empty picture with itself um, inside the same module of the three sphere. So this one is specializes. And we might think that um, so the Z of the four ball evaluated on this empty picture should just be one, because I said I was taking this element to be that, but it's going to be convenient to um, give ourselves some. Flexibility. So you want to, I guess our ansatz here um, so let this be some number now. Okay. So what I, what I want to do is continue to write things down here and then we'll have these sort of terms that we haven't calculated and product is, and then once we've seen the list of everything we need, we we'll need to calculate the general form manifold, then we'll figure out this product. So that's the same procedure we've gone through the last few lectures. Um, so the next thing, um, what we want to calculate is, is the uh, Three handles, 
So we'll keep three handles evaluated on the empty picture. Think of that as um, meaning all the three handles. Um, so if we've got a, a three-handle, four-dimensional three-handle, what's at the top? It's, it's attached to one. It's attached to one has two cross sides. And because of, we've got the empty set here, it's, it's, it has two cross sides with empty boundary conditions. So what is the scheme model? We have all pictures like this, modulo and usual relations, sitting in S2 cross side. That's, again, a one-dimensional scheme model. You can take any picture and just contained in a three ball by these things. So, um, so this will be equal to so two things I get evaluated just in the picture times product over all three handles of three handle handle as a, you know it's just a four manifold value of something empty. Um, let me, and I think we've already said that that's going to be one of this one. Let me just write that. And then we have one over the inner product of the empty set, of the empty picture, but now it's the inner product not in the scale line of the three sphere, but inside. It's going to be plus two plus i. Okay. So looking pretty easy so far. Write that as, and again, we just have to evaluate on the empty set. Um, okay, what is so? What is the attaching region for a two handle? It's a, it's a solid torus. That's one across P two. Um, with empty boundary conditions. So we have to ask ourselves um, the scale module S1, S2, empty boundary conditions. Um, so we have a solid torus and we have pictures like this running around. And if we have you know, a bunch of strands, here's my solid torus. I have some crazy spaghetti in there, but I can just choose a place to cut. And then I can apply this relation repeatedly this, so that I can assume there's only one strand that goes across here. It's a sum of things that come across that once. And then I have sort of arbitrary stuff happening there that I can just squeeze all that down into a, a three ball. And so what I see here is just arbitrary mess and that. But using these relations, that can, that's just you know, some multiple single strand. So it follows that. A strand labeled by a simple object is a spanning set for the scheme module. And um, an easy argument shows that, in fact, that's the basis. So, so now in applying the formula right here, we're going to have a non trivial summation. So it's going to be, a, we're going to, for every two handle, we're going to have to sum over all things. So we sum over labelings. Handles by the simple objects L. Given such a labeling, um, we can evaluate this piece. We have the neighborhood of one skeleton on something that's not the empty picture anymore. It's sort of these, um, you know, some length in the, the boundary three manifold. Determined by this labeling. Um, and we have the product for the two handles. Of, so we want to evaluate the two handle on this basis picture. But when we, if we consider the full bandwidth of the two handle rather than just the attaching boundary, it's a three sphere. Um, and so this is really the loop value. Lambda because of the fact that here at many times you know, it is the length of A, where 
A means the you know, value of this labeling of size to it. Divide out the inner product. Let's, let's call this thing else a bit. Okay, we're almost done. We've, um, almost done with you know, this list of things we need to calculate. Uh, so it's we saw this in the Torah here model too for the um, yeah, I should look, let me draw a picture of where we are so far. So it's schematic. So we have these zero handles, so all the dimensions are short, so we don't want them. We have various one handles between them. This is my picture of W1, neighborhood one skeleton. Um, and then I have <clears throat> sitting in the, in the boundary of this, which will be, I mean, this is a schematic picture of a four manifold, so the boundary is a, it's a three manifold, and we have various solid four I'm just going to draw them down. And this is one. And down. So this will be the solid torus, which I'm drawing as an annual. This is the attaching region for a two handle. Sitting inside there is you know, some rhythm given by A you know, for each such thing. That's the picture there. So we want to evaluate this. And if we, you know, if we were like a computer program or something, we would you know, cut the one handle here and here. The booming problem, that's kind of redundant because from here to here is just a product. It's more efficient just to cut in the middle. So we're going to cut things like that. Um, and then again, apply this formula. So this picture I've drawn here of the score manifold cut in various pieces, uh, far spots to this picture I drew here, and then we have this general formula for how to calculate something, this four manifold in terms of something for that. So we end up finding the Z of the one evaluated on this particular pattern of ribbons sitting inside this three manifold that I haven't given a name to. Is equal to um, we, what's the cut manifold? The cut manifold is really is basically just the zero handles because these half one handles can retract that joint. So it's simply a bunch of jacks or star shaped things together. So that's product over the zero handles of um, you need to. And evaluating the pattern with the zero handle, we already know that. Those are the onsats that it's taking a picture. We take the standard evaluation and multiply it by the lambda. So that's lambda times. Um, and then what are, what are we evaluating on is some kind of um, graph. Um, and then we, th we think of that as somehow the, the link is going to. This, this graph for this network is going to have an edge for every two handle that hits the zero handle. It's going to have a vertex for every one handle. But that's so in terms of combinatorial combinatorial of the diagram. This is just the sort of link of the um, vertex and the cell decomposition. So I'm just going to write it. I'll be more specific in a moment. Um, and then the only, the only other term it has is one over the, the product. Um, so what's our, we're going to have to sum over a basis of the attaching region here. So if we draw that attaching region, we've got various ribbons coming in. So the lower region picture. A, B, C, D, these A, B, C, Ds are things that come from this summation here. Um, and we said over here that to any such picture we have some vector space that depends on the outer boundaries. And in certain cases, you know, if we were doing SL2, which is everyone's favorite one of the cases, so it would be one dimensional and we can sort of forget about it. But in general, we have to sum the basis of that. So, um, so I'm going to have to write on the outside sum over 
equations of the mean angles by basis of D meaning um, um, and so this is that so the, the number of things you see down here is determined by the common force so of the silicon composition and the actual wavelengths come from here. And I sum over that basis, and then I have to divide by one over the inner product of this thing is so, you know, my picture like that, that's my particular basis. Okay. So, um, what we can do now is calculate this, and this, and this, and this, and that, and then write it down as one big huge sum of the products of angles. Um, so I would do this one. If I had my notes with you, I might just write down the answers, but I don't have my notes and I can never remember the answers. I have to always rederive them. Um, so I'll try to do that. Also, I think uh, this, this formula holds for arbitrary handle decompositions. I think handle decomposition is a thick and cell decomposition, but it's often convenient to assume that it's generic in the sense that it's dual to a triangulation. So at certain points, I'm going to make the, that simplifying assumption. And what it amounts to is that every um, one handle has exactly four two handles going over it. And so the, the, the transverse distal one handle is a, is a three ball. And that three ball and sort of the tetrahedral pattern will have four two handles going over. And similarly, these vertex links will all look the same, but we have one skeleton of a five simplex. So some graph with five vertices and ten edges, um, and each edge is, is, is fully down. So, and it's important to keep that case in mind because we, we want to make contact with the existing literature that we're praying together make that kind of assumption. This isn't how they proceed it. Um, okay, so um, let's consider the inner product of something like this with itself. And that's equal to what we just move them together. And the evaluation of this. Mm -hmm. so this is good. Um, so of, of this, um, and that that just is what it is. We can't simplify it further. This is like one of the basic structure constants of the theory. Um, we yeah, actually could simplify it a little bit further because we could write, we could sort of resolve this four valent vertex in the sum of three things. And so the basis could have this one. Anyway, that's, there's not much more to say about that. Um, so similarly, this, this link thing is just going to be an evaluation of some graph. So it's something we, we're sort of assuming that we already know how to. If any picture of this in the three ball or C here, we know how to write it. We just want to express the answer for a general four manifold in terms of this. Um, so those are okay. Um, I'm going to probably one of these loops of itself. So I'm going to 
product is also then say L sub B, because we also need to prove, I said it was a basis, but in order to apply the formula that used to be here, we need an orthogonal basis. Um, so this is a inner product that takes place in the scheme module of mean Q plus S1 empty down conditions. And so that, of course, is equal to half in the role of Writing this with I, E3 plus S1 evaluated on a pair of loops over by A and B. And now we, we cut this um, in the floor wall. So here is E3 plus I, which we're going to glue up to get E3 plus S1. And it's got a couple of things on the outside. And now we have to sum over basis. The thing we're gluing along. What are we gluing along? This is a three ball with a pair of endpoints. So, this is my three ball. I've got an incoming ribbon labeled by A, an outcoming ribbon labeled by D. Well, A and B are, are simple objects, so this is going to be zero dimensional if A is not equal to B. Um, suppose A is. Um, but if they're equal, then we get Z of D3 plus I evaluated on. Um, if, if they're equal, though, it's one dimensional span by this single ribbon going by A. So we sort of complete it here. So this is evaluated on the double A. And then we have to divide out by one over the inner product. In the special case of this formula, where, we, where there's only Two strands coming out is that the, the end product is the so these two can't be So it's a orthonormal basis. We've seen similar calculations in the Torah Google case. So this is just a good one. Okay, we've got two things to go. The inner product of the empty set with itself inside S2 cross I and the end product of the empty set with itself inside T3. Um, so I'm going to write S2 cross I as sort of the union of two um, I guess first I need to compute it. So this is an inner product. So this is the same as the half integral of S2 cross V2 evaluated on the intercept. And I'm going to write this as a union of two three balls. We can think of it as like a zero handle and a two handle. Um, and what are they glued along? Well, it's the attaching region for a two handle, which is the solid torus. And so we need to sum over basis of the solid torus, and that's what we just compute these loops here. So this is equal to um, sum over our simple objects, sum over our sub A's of, um, of each, both the zero handle and the two handle are, so we can really attach the regions, just four balls, and so we're evaluating four balls in groups. So it's value of a squared times lambda squared. So every time I value it up and a little bit back of lambda. So it's a squared because we've got the two pieces. And then the, the one over normal squared term is one because this is a, not just an orthogonal basis but an orthonormal basis. So that's that's the answer. And this the sum of sum over the simple objects of, of the squares that's Sort of a, a fundamental constant of the cross and cross over the over again. Maybe you know, this is called p squared. You know, this is sum of just this part. So this is one squared. P squared. Okay, one more to go. And a product of the empty set with the empty set and scheme module. 
piece here. So the like half integral of x3 plus i evaluated on um, what we need. Yeah, we need to picture. And I think of this as a zero handle and a union, a three handle, and the union is along um, this two plus i. So the zero handle evaluated on the empty set of so, so what, you know, what's the basis for this? So the basis is the empty, empty picture, um, and we know the m squared, so we get a factor of lambda from the zero handle, lambda from the three handle, and then one over norm squared um, gives, Okay, so now we can substitute everything from here in these formulas and write down our random unified states on. Um, so, so, Z of a four manifold, I'm assuming for means is closed. Some analysis to put my full value of some graph of value is equal to sum over the means of two angles by simple objects. Sum we have up here, and there's a subsidiary sum of the labels. Product over the four handles of um, lambda, and this term is over d squared and take the inverse, so this is n squared. Product over the three handles of This number, which was lambda squared d squared, so that's the This is where it's easy to state some of these numbers, right? The two handles of lambda times the loop value of this factor was just one. Is a this is a the center product. We yeah, inverted it up here, so it's so it's an empty inverse because it's in the denominator. And I'm going to call this to sort of generalize theta of, of again something determined by the labeling. This is the evaluation of the picture. Just like that. And finally, product over the zero handles. Lambda times the vertex length of that zero angle. And this will be a picture of this. And, uh, this 
That theta should be in the denominator. Is that true? Yes, it is. Thanks. Okay. So um, this is it's kind of like this derived your formula we wrote down. Um, But um, a little more complicated than I mentioned. So I want to claim that this, um, so there's three, there's three different state sums that have been in literature for quite a while. Before I came up with this, and I want to say that this specializes to, to each of them. So one that I've already mentioned is we were doing this for any cell decomposition. Um, for if we assume it's a generic cell decomposition, then um, Um, so these terms don't change. This term, you know, looks literally like four, it does have four across. In general, you could have any number of bars on the generalized state, but generically you have four. Um, but this could be further simplified by s splitting the four valent vertex into a pair of three things. And it's, you know, if you do it sort of differently in each end, this might become like a tetrahedral evaluation. This one, similarly, we've got, we've got 10 edges and five vertices, but we can again split the vert vertices, um, and we would have 15 edges, and it becomes what's sometimes called a 15J symbol. I don't know if any other than Cranium did it. Six and nine, but 15Js. Um, And you know, I don't think I've ever checked the details, but once we made those substitutions, and this looks a lot like something that um, Crane and Yetter and Calvin wrote down. And originally Crane and Yetter, but the only paper I've seen that had the details was one second. Calvin is a co-author. Um, and, and also to get that we have to take lambda equals one. We only consider that case, which um, okay, so one special, so we think that at least for lambda equals one, and changing lambda is, is not such a big deal. We, I, we saw in some of the previous lectures that varying lambda is like taking the tensor product with one of these early characteristic groups. In fact, if you notice, the powers of lambda alternate, so we, at the end of the day, we just have lambda raised to the early characteristic group. Um, but we're going to see in a moment that it's convenient to take lambda equal to something else. So this will cancel out some of these other values. Okay, so that's case one. What about um, case two is we just have a zero handle and a bunch of two handles. So that's a very, you know, that simplifies things a lot. The only thing that gets more complicated is the length of the vertex instead of being some standard five simplex thing, it's just some arbitrary length in the three sphere. And so what we end up with is, so, so this kind of surgery presentation of a four, of a four manifold with boundary. Um, this is described by a frame length in the three sphere. 
and so we end up giving a frame link, um, end up sum, summing a row labelings of the link by simple objects of this link term, which is just the generalized Jones polynomial. So in that case, we just get the Russian team into our surgery. Um, so the, this thing becomes Russian team to surgery formula. Um, and I think for to get to come out right, we actually need lambda and I've, I've forgotten what the special value of lambda is. I think it's Okay, so but this might seem strange because the, the written Russian to try a surgery form is for a two plus one dimensional T fifty mm -hmm. with an anomaly and we've got a three plus one dimensional thing. Um, and it's the Russian to drive surgery formula not for this four manifold, which is that theory and we consider for the manifolds, it's for the boundary three manifolds. So what we'll see in a moment is if we tune lambda, if we make lambda equal to this special value, then this state sum depends sort of only on the boundary of the four manifold and not on the interior. Sort of deduce from it a um, very one dimensional roller. Um, the, the other thing that might have first seem fishy is at the beginning I wrote down a few types of categories. We have this pre modular categories which we've been looking for, it satisfies all those things, but usually when you're doing Russian Tika and derived theory, um, you make an additional assumption about our category, which is the determinant of the matrix given by. A hop link. So, maybe you know, there are simple objects. You assume that's not equal to zero. This is, this is a condition made for a modular. Um, and it goes to a pre modular one. And all the other conditions we wrote down are just sort of the obvious things you would write for like a, a pivotal three category with trivial zero and one morphisms. But, but this seems kind of like motivated. Who cares what the determinant of this matrix is? I'm oh, sorry, that, that should be a zero, not a one, right? Yes. <laughs> so why, why should we care about the determinant of this matrix? So that, that seems kind of motivated. But we'll get to that in a moment. But the thing to note is that this, this surgery formula, the invariance of the surgery formula, the proof doesn't meet this assumption. So the surgery formula gives an invariant of the link modular handle slides, even for a pre modular category. So, what we're saying is maybe there's some relation between, and as far as I can tell in the literature, I've, I haven't seen this written down anywhere, but um, some people came close. Um, anyway, suggesting that there's some kind of close relation between the screen of the Calvin theory and the Russian Tikkun, which Tikkun for a return science theories. Um, the third case, I just mentioned briefly, um, if you can take a decomposition, and I think Tariah calls them special spines, but it's basically you don't have any three or four handles, but then you allow your um, two handles to actually be an arbitrary surface. So instead of just doing a thickened disk on the four handles, you can use some kind of thickened surface with some kind of disk bundle that might have a not sure you return number. So this can be adapted to that case. And Tariah wrote down, it's, it's not very well known, I think it's, it's in his big book. Um, he wrote down a, a state sum for those kinds of pairs of decomposition to the same and specializes to that. So all these, so these are the three sort of special cases of this. So what's left to do is um, explain this mystery of why this formula, which we think of as associated with the 2 plus 1 dimensional TKFT is coming out in this 3 plus 1 dimensional context. Um, so, I'm going to do it one time. Um, okay, so there's lots. So what I want to aim for in the remainder is showing that 
of this three plus one dimensional t of t if we set lambda equal to one over d. Um, then for a closed four manifold, it, it's going to depend only on the signature. Um, and the, the Hilbert spaces of the scan module for closed three manifolds are always going to be one dimensional. And the, the one categories for surfaces are always going to be more to trivial, right? They'll just be matrix algebras. Um, and that maybe a little bit more generally, if you have a four manifold boundary, the invariance can depend only on the boundary. Similarly, for a three manifold boundary, the scale mod the dimension of the scale module depends only on what the boundary is and not the three manifold. So we'll find that we can just um, you know, forget about forget about what's inside the manifold and look only at the boundary, i.e., we're reducing dimensions by one. So we find instead of three plus one to two plus one dimensional theory, which would be Exactly this one. Except I, I said we could figure it out of the boundary, but it wasn't quite true because, for example, when we had a closed four manifold, we still needed to remember the signature. So there's going to be a little ghost or shadow of the interior of these boundaries that was that was there. And that extra information is going to be the sort of extension and anomaly type of information for these question So that's that's what we want to prove. Um, Writing it down. So, summarizing what I just said, we can combine the written Rashitiko Tarayev theory of some k manifold x and have k is equal to 1, 2, or 3. I'm going to throw three manifold vector space for two manifold category for one manifold. And I define it to be the um, three plus one dimensional thing. This is three plus one dimensional of boundary inverse of x. Uh, you just take some manifold whose boundary is x and then evaluate our theory here. Now, is that, you might say, well, isn't it going to depend on the choice? Yes, it is very slightly. So x is going to have to be not just a plain old k manifold, but k manifold with a little bit of extra information that allows us to narrow down our choices of the inverse boundary. Um, okay. So let's first maybe let's think about four manifolds. Um, I think what I want to claim is that this depends only on um, the board is in class in the four manifold. In other words, I can do surgeries inside the four manifold. It's not going to change the value of this. So um, surgeries in a four manifold, well, we can pull, one thing we can do is we can pull out um, B4 cross S0, and a pair of four manifolds. And you can do back in um, S3 cross I in the same direction. You can also take um, S1, let's say, this part. B3. Plus one in place of plus two plus two. And so any if, if any two if two manifold four manifolds are born, they're related by a series of you know, these two nodes or their inverses. Um, and So, so is that is that clear? Do people know when I say like surgery and, and, and then, you know, this would be one direction would be like attaching a, a, a five dimensional one handle. You can use five dimensional words in between four handles and attach a one handle and that's equal to attaching a, a 
before they have all three, so you get two and three numbers. And then the other fact, which is not at all obvious, is that two four manifolds of Borden can only if they have the same signature. And that's, that's true in that way also. Um, okay, so what we want to do is cal calculate how these operations are going to change things here. And um, see if it's the same. So by our, our gluing formula, um, what, we, so what we really want to do is show that Z of an angle fourth initial invariant of the full process zero is equal to Z of S three plus I. And this is they're equal, they're both inside um, the dual spin module of it's the boundary. It's, um, Process. So as function, you know, so each of these things are thought of as functions on the space. That's what I think. It's the first one that I wrote up there. And much so these, these determine the same functions. Um, okay, B4 cross. So we just basically have two copies of the three sphere. So what's the basis for this space? It's two copies of the empty picture. So we just have to take these path angles and write everyone. Same thing. Um, well, this one is equal to lambda squared. We get a factor of lambda for each four law. This one, um, that's a calculus we did, which unfortunately I erased. So it was something in terms of d and lambda. Just d squared? This plane B squared. Yep. Not 1 over D squared. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 3 plus Z of S3 plus I. Lambda times lambda times 1 over D squared. Oh, 1 over lambda squared. Oh, sorry. Yeah, okay, yes, yeah, so D and negative 2. Yeah. Okay, so if. Um, Lambda is equal to hmm, this thing. Well, maybe, okay, so maybe I did it. Okay, right, okay. Part of the reason I'm getting confused is that there's another less good, less common dimension literature that replaces, instead of calling this d squared, it calls it d. And some, you know, some times I get confused with that. So, so if lambda is equal to d inverse, Good. Okay, so that wasn't hard. And we didn't even need to yet use this condition. Um, I should say that this is true when if n is d inverse and the modular case. Okay, but this one is going to be a little bit harder. Um, okay, so we want Z of uh, E3 plus S1 equal to Z of S2 plus. E2, and these both will be in the same model of 2 plus S1. Okay, so what is the scan model? It's not obviously one dimensional scan by the empty picture. Um, so the short answer is this is scanned by the so called transparent elements. In Categories, the ones that they trivial with everything. Um, so, how do we see linear combinations of trans and simple 
objects, and so it's a transparent simple object. It's an object T satisfying this picture is equal to this picture for all. So the trivial object is transparent, and sometimes there are others. And it turns out, so what we want to show is, one, I have to prove that. And I want to prove that this is only one dimensional, if and only if this determinant is zero. Um, and then I also need to calculate that these two things are on the inside here. Uh, so let's, let's do that first. Um, Well, maybe let's, let's do this. Um, so one thing to notice is that you're going to work inside the same logic plus two plus plus one. Um, and we know that it, it so one by the by the usual spine here, we know that this is spanned by um, loops that go around the S1 direction made by it, because it's the same argument we use in the solid tools. Stretch things, stretch things out and recombine them. So these elements span. So the question is, are they zero, you know, are they independent in here or zero? So one thing to note is that inside this two plus S1, this picture is equal to this picture. Ring A and B applies that because this is the sort of S, S1 direction, and we have this sort of S2 direction here, and then two sphere, we can slide this all the way off to the back of the two sphere and bring it back around. So, um, so this shows. And then let's, let's, so let's define. S tilde sub A B the evaluation of a picture like this. So this is that matrix that we determined we were talking about. Um, so a simple argument shows that this side is equal to S tilde A B divided by value of A, which is just A1. Whereas this is equal to S tilde A1 times. Times is straight. So, in order for A to be non zero, we need to for all B. Um, it's totally it. So, say, the promise of A is non zero. If um, for all B, it's totally B is equal to In other, in other words, um, the eighth row of the matrix is proportional to the, the first row by its constant proportionality. So, yeah, I mangled that a little bit, but it's sort of a simple linear algebra argument. So, what we find is if the rows of this matrix, this tilde, are all linearly independent, then the only possible a that's not zero here is a trivial object. Um, it's a little more work to show that, conversely, if you have a row that is proportional to the first row, then it's going to be these transparent objects and it's not zero here, but we actually don't need that yet. So, so we're in the modular case, so we just have, to, so the only you know, evaluating this path in is we just have to evaluate the non-empty picture. So, 
Okay, so what is this variation? Um, this is going to be so, so the empty picture is our basis element and this scheme of other these assumptions. We can cut this into four ball and we cut the empty product of the cells of the usual sorts of vitamins. This is going to be one of the lambda. This lambda is the sort of inner product of the empty picture of the three ball itself. Um, in this case, we have um, it is a calculation we, we did before, but it's I'm going to cut this into the two pieces of zero handle and two handle. Those two pieces each go a factor lambda, and then we'll be summing over um, our basis for the limb on Salatoris. This is sum over A minus the obvious of so A squared. A is just A squared, B squared. This is one because I this is a factor of one over lambda from the inner product, but then there's also a factor of lambda from this the, the full ball variation. So again, we're okay if lambda is a good use. Okay, so now we've succeeded in showing that if we tune our parameter lambda to be one over D, then it's pretty dangerous. Um, we can surgery our four manifolds at will and not change that. So that suggests then that if we, if we want to make this definition work for our three manifolds, the only thing we have to remember, and we don't have to equip our three manifolds with this specific choice of inverse boundary, we just have to remember the signature. I just some literature. And that's I mean, there's different ways when you're doing the traditional ways of developing the expression taking prior theory. There's different ways of considering the external information. Um, you know, Whitten considered some equivalence class of framings. Um, and some notes that I wrote up it was actually, even though I didn't have this picture in mind, some boys in class of four manifolds. There's things having to do with the term sign of invariant that suggest that that's the other thing to do. I mean, people talk about a human structure, but and all those just boil down to the it turns out. Um, so things look on track so far. We still have to make sense of this formula in dimensions one and two. Um, and it's 1137. Stop there.